big party. Yeah, it does look like a party. Goodbye. Go back and tell him we must leave at once. We must leave at once. Are you going? Yes, sir. This time they've tried it often enough. I have a feeling this princess will get you. No, not this one or any other princess. Lutzen. Uh, a souvenir from your Albert. Oh, thank you, Albert. Be a good girl. Don't forget Albert. And now, listen, before His Excellency gets apoplexy. Is there anyone else for me to say goodbye to, listen? No, that was the last one. Good. <laughs> Are we too late? Yes. His Highness is about to leave. No. Yes. And after I've tried for so long to leave here. Sorry. Well, why haven't I been told about you before? Lipson could have told you all about me before. But he simply refused to bring me to one of your parties. He said I wasn't your type. Hmm. Did he say you were his type? Uh, I, uh, I, uh, Oh, yes, uh, I know all about it, but you're entirely too good to me. Can't you stay? Well, uh... I have an excellent idea. Come along. I've got a surprise for you. Uh, let me present, uh, 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 present, uh, Mitzi. Present Mitzi. She's always wanted to come to one of our parties. Oh, but aren't you going? Yes, I must go. But you're going to stay right here and keep everything going until I get back. Oh, <laughs> oh what about the princess? Never mind that. Today's Wednesday. I mean, it's Thursday by now. Thursday. Sunday, I'll be back. Everything keeps up. The champagne, the music, and Mitzi. <laughs> champagne and Mitzi. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, Mitzi. But be a good girl. Until I return. Your Highness. Uh, I have promised that you will leave tonight. The Emperor will be furious if you're not at the castle by morning. If the Emperor only knew what a sacrifice I'm making by leaving all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Until Sunday! <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Uh, 
Now, my dear Wunderlich, what about this princess? Your Highness knows as well as I, you are to pay court to her. And, uh... When the Emperor's adjutant wires you the confirmation, you are to ask her to marry you. You have everything arranged, haven't you? I've done my best. You are very clever at getting me in for things but not quite as clever as I am at getting out of them, especially when it comes to princesses. <laughs> Just watch me. <laughs> It's an old book of fairy stories. We found it in the nursery. Yes, we got it to read to Dr. Haller. Dr. Haller? Why should you read it to your tutor? Oh, just to tease him. Didn't he get angry? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, Dr. Haller is the poor shepherd, and you are the princess, and Albert is the prince. You said that to Dr. Haller? Well, it's true. Prince Albert is here to ask you to marry him. Isn't he? Yes, and Dr. Haller's in love with you. George, you don't know what you're saying. Don't we, though? Haven't you seen Look how... Look, I'm saying. Hello, Hello, Dr. Haller. Well, I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, Your Highness. You'll be sorry to see Alexander go away. Won't you, Dr. Haller? Why, I had hoped that I should continue to have the privilege of instructing Your Highness in fencing. Oh, you don't have to be so formal. Of course you'll be sorry. You said you would. Your Highness, it's time for your fencing. Get your foils, please, both of you. All right, come on, come And hurry. <laughs> your brothers are excited over the arrival of His Highness Prince Albert. Uh, I had hoped that... Uh, yes? I had hoped that perhaps they exaggerated the importance of his visit. Why had you hoped that? Of course, Your Highness, if it means happiness to you. Happiness? Oh, I know. As a princess, you can hardly expect to find happiness in your marriage. Really, Dr. Heller? Yes. I was about to say that <laughs> I'd learned from my study of history that royalty can seldom do more than obey the demands of politics. I shouldn't even allow you to discuss this with me. Forgive me, Your Highness. But is that really true, Dr. Heller? Have princesses never been free to choose their, uh, their, uh... They've always been the servants of their people. And you? As a, a student, a scientist, are you free? At least my heart is free, Princess. Dr. Heller, I... The boys are waiting for you. Oh, yes. Uh, will you come and watch them practice? No, I'm waiting for Prince Albert. He'll be here any moment. Oh, of course. Your Highness. Well, are we all ready? Yes. Let's do our practice then, eh? Well, Albert is still sleeping. And you are still eating. At 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> My dear brother, I thought one of the things you learned at the monastery was fasting. <laughs> My dear sister. When I withdrew from the world and became a monk, I had so many vices to conquer. This is one I haven't even begun on yet. Oh, forgive me for scolding, Benedict. <laughs> but if you only knew the strain I've been under these last few days. I tried to get you to tell me about it last night when I arrived. Oh. What's happened? Hmm? Well, that's exactly it. Nothing has happened. Has Alexandra 
been cold to Albert's advances? His advances? The minute he got here, he started to retreat. I tell you, Benedict, it's almost driven me mad. Oh, there, there. You must be calm. Calm? Do you realize that Albert is leaving here tomorrow without having once been alone with Alexandra? And you ask me to be calm? <laughs> oh, you know what this marriage means to our family. It's our last chance. That's what it is. And I'm not going to miss it. But if you'll only be calm... If you tell me to be calm again, I shall scream. Oh. No. You're right. I will be calm. I must be calm. <clears throat> Albert has promised to take Alexandra this morning into the Rose Garden. Oh. Are you going to lock him up there with Alexandra? Better than that. You and I are going to take his staff to see the new vacuum milking machines in the dairy. Are they interested in vacuum milking machines? No. It will take us over an hour to go there and back, and for once that devil Lutzen will not be able to rescue Albert. Yes, yes. Oh, what is it? He's awake. Oh, that's... I just saw Bundelik go into his room through the keyhole. What? Semperosa means she saw him through the keyhole. Oh. Uh, go, go back at once. Tell me the instant he is dressed. Yes. What is this? Oh. oh, now, Benedict, you know what I, I expect from you. Don't let Lutzen out of your sight for a minute. A general never gave clearer orders. It's a lucky thing there's one general in the family. Alexander, what are you doing here? I thought I told you to wait in the Rose Garden. I have been waiting. Waiting for hours. Good morning, my dear. Oh, dear Uncle Benedict. But Albert will be down in a moment. You, you must hurry back to the Rose Garden. You, you know, oh, he can't. Poor Albert. The way we plot against him. I don't think he wants to marry me. Alexandra. Sit down. A time like this, and you say a thing like that. Don't you know how I struggled to get Albert to say he'd go into the Rose Garden? Yes, Mother. I know how clever you've been. Uh, don't be impressed by that, Alexandra. Your mother nearly lost your father by being clever. Benedict? Mm. It's a good thing you came back, if this is the state of mind you're in. Oh, Mother, I'm always disappointing you. Don't you want to be a queen? Or do you think there are so many princes left with thrones to offer? Yes, Mother, I understand. Since our family lost its throne, I'm very lucky to get married at all. Oh, well, then, then when you're with Albert, you will be determined and clever, as I have taught you. I'll try. Oh, think how happy you will be when all this dreadful uncertainty is over and Albert is ours. <laughs> yes, Mother. You know, ever since I was a little girl, I've always thought of marrying Albert. I wanted to. But I didn't think it would be like this. What do you mean? That it would be so difficult. It isn't what I expected at all. You talk as if this were an ordinary love affair. But it isn't silly romantics that's going to win. Albert Beatrice. Well, what is Beatrice? It? What, yes. Albert's coming. No. This minute. Oh. He's on his way now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Alexander, you, you will not have time to go back to the garden. Perhaps it'll be just as well. You meet him in the hall. Benedict, in heaven's name, will you stop eating? What is the matter with you, Beatrice? You used to be so calm and collected. In times of peace, yes. But this is war. Come, Benedict. <laughs> Get me out of this, Lutzen. There's a decoration for you for rescue under shell fire. Good morning. Oh, dear Albert, I do hope you slept well. Indeed, I did. And Alexandra, what a pleasant surprise. Well, uh... <laughs> oh, these are the roses I've been hearing about. <laughs> and what long stems. I don't wonder you're proud of them. Oh, these aren't anything, Albert. 
Well, we never pick the best. You will have to go to the garden to see those. Oh, I see. <laughs> These are only samples. <laughs> then, by all means, let's go to the garden. Will you show it to me, Alexandra? Yes, Albert, if you like. I've been looking forward to it. Oh, uh, Count Lutzen, I don't think you have met Father Benedict yet. And now I know how anxious you are to see the dairy. Hmm? Oh, yes, and uh, the vacuum milking machine. I'm sure Count Lutzen will enjoy that. Oh, Count Dudley. Well, it's extraordinary how well I sleep here. <laughs> I don't know whether it's the quiet or the country air, or what shall I say, uh, a certain indefinable... I'm uh, glad you slept so uh, well, Albert. Yes, yes. Uh, My brothers, dancing with their tutor. Oh, splendid. Let's go in and watch them. Well, uh... uh Dr. Dr. Howard. Uh, don't let me interrupt. I enjoy watching you. <laughs> ah, there. Please don't feel you have to be so formal. You may relax. <laughs> you must be the boy's tutor. Yes, Your Highness. Dr. Howard. Oh, of course. I've been hearing splendid things about you. I understand you not only tutor the boys, but also instruct them in sports. Oh, Dr. Holler can do anything. He rides and fences and boxes and swims. And, and he's an astronomer, too. He takes us up to the observatory every night. He knows the name of every single star. Well, well. Healthy mind and a healthy body. <laughs> That's the right idea. That's the way I'd bring up a boy. Aren't you lucky to have such a versatile tutor? Yes, we. Mother is very pleased with Dr. Heller. You'll have a chance to see them fence this afternoon, Albert. Splendid. Uh, Your Highness. Yes? May I ask, is Your Highness going to take part in the fencing exhibition for His Highness? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Your Highness fences with such grace and skill, I had hoped that you would... I made other plans for this afternoon. Forgive me, Your Highness. It was only my pride as a teacher that made me speak. Albert, perhaps we'd better leave the boys to their practice? Oh, yes, of course. We're forgetting the rose garden. I look forward to talking with you again, Dr. Haller. Come on, aren't we going to practice anymore? What? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, ready. On guard. Smoothly, gracefully. That's it. I wish Albert would make up his mind about Alexander. Nearly got you that time. Be oh, careful. Touché. Keep that close. Come on now. Come on. If Albert does marry her and Alexander's the queen someday, what would that make us? Gotcha. Look. Good. Oh, you needn't think you're so good, George. You wouldn't have hit him if he hadn't been thinking of someone. Uh... <laughs> Your Highness. That will do. All right, come on, both of you, at once. Put on your mask. Come on. Oh, so these are your roses. Yes, Albert. Did you plant them yourself? No, I just take care of them. Oh, you enjoy that, huh? Yes. Do the thorns ever prick your fingers? Sometimes. You should wear gloves. I do. And still they prick your fingers. Then you should wear thicker gloves. Thank you. I'll try that. Mm -hmm. Albert, are you going to ask me to marry you? Oh. <laughs> don't be frightened. You don't have to ask me. It's just that... But, uh, Alexandra, the... Suddenly, all this seems so silly. All the scheming and planning, my trying to be left alone with you, and you're trying to avoid me. Oh, but whatever made you think Oh, that no, I... please, don't explain. I understand how hard it's been for you. 
That's why I thought perhaps we could pretend to forget about it. I mean, about why you came here. Then maybe we could be friends. Alexandra, you're charming. Oh, please. <laughs> don't think you have to make love to me. <laughs> All right, then. Let's be friends. I didn't know they made princesses like you. <laughs> Mother doesn't think I'm much of a princess. That's why you shouldn't be afraid of me. You aren't anymore, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I look forward so to your coming. That is before Mother began telling me how I must act this way and that way. I was so confused. And why did you look forward to my coming? I remembered when I was little, and you used to come here. It was so exciting. This is such a dull place. And you came from the capital where there's a real court. And you were a real prince who would be a king someday. And I used to think that I might... Yes? Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Won't you tell me about the city? Please do. Tell me, um, about those parties you give. Oh, Mother doesn't know, but I've read about them in the papers. And about all the girls that are in love with you. <laughs> are there so many? Are you jealous of them? <laughs> oh, no. You needn't be. There now, you'll think I tried to make you say that. Don't tell me about it if you don't want to. I've forgotten all about them. Anyway, I'd rather talk about you. We can be friends, can't we? Of course. And you won't think you have to avoid me? I didn't try to avoid you. That was only your mother's imagination. Really? True? Yes, oh. really. <laughs> Albert, do you want to know something? What? <laughs> this isn't my rose garden. No? I just pretended it was. I hardly ever come here. Alexandra, suppose... suppose I wanted to make love to you. Now, Albert, do you mean you really want... Your Highness, the Home Office is waiting for you on the long distance phone. Oh, tell them I can't come. It's the most urgent, Your Highness. Uh, tell them I'll call them after luncheon. They cannot wait. I tell you, I can't come now. Give them that message. But, Your Highness... Uh, a great political, uh, 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 political... Uh, Politics, that can wait. But, uh, Albert, uh, please, don't let me keep you. Oh, but, Alexandra, if you'd only let me explain no, this... No, I quite understand. Oh, uh, please, Alexandra, it's just that... just well. I have things to attend to also. What are you laughing at, you <laughs> idiot? <laughs> but Albert, uh, well, When did I give you permission to call me Albert? Your Highness, didn't you tell me... That's that enough. You'll get your decoration. So all the years I've sacrificed for you and this is my reward. Can't you even tell your mother, your own mother, what happened? Is that asking too much? I told you, nothing happened. I talked with Albert, then Count Lutzen came. I know all about that. And don't you think your Uncle Benedict's not going to hear from me about it? Imagine him not being able to keep Lutzen with him. It's a conspiracy, that's what it is. My own flesh and blood. For those that should serve me best, fail me in a crisis. And I must go on alone. Don't blame Uncle Benedict. Lutzen had his orders from Albert. He wouldn't have got away from me. But, oh, my dear, what I want to know is this. What happened before that? What did you say to him? What did he say to you? I just tried to be nice to him. Oh. But, Mother, you're right. I don't know anything about men, and I'll never learn. That may be the truth, but this is no time to admit it. I thought if I were just honest and sincere with him, Instead of trying to be clever, that you were what with him? I just tried to tell him the truth. Oh. 
Oh, this is, this is more than I can stand. Of all the things you had to tell Albert and you told him the truth. Don't you know that's one thing you never tell a man? Oh, this is the worst blow of all. But I'll not let it defeat me. There is one chance left. You may not like it, but you must steel yourself to it. Will you be brave? Yes, Mother. Oh, my dear, I know what a delicate, sensitive nature you have. Tell me what I had to do. But you must remember, in a crisis so desperate that anything is justified, even if it seems beneath you. Mother, what is it? Alexandra, there is only one way for a woman to arouse the interest of a man, and that is to have another man interested in her. But, uh... You will invite the tutor to the ball tonight. And you will allow him to dance with you. Mother. Don't be so horrified. Even if he is only the son of a common farmer, he's a human being, the same as any of us. But I shall have to be nice to him. But naturally. Well, suppose he misunderstood. Suppose he should, well, feel attracted to me. Is there anything to make you think he feels that way already? Sometimes. He seems rather embarrassed when he speaks to me. Oh, oh, that is nothing. Besides, my dear, you will do nothing that could be misunderstood. Mother. He's an astronomer. Talk to him about the stars. That should be a safe subject. <laughs> Your poor dear father always called you his swan. And he was right. You are like a swan, proud. Beautiful and aloof. One has only to look at you to know that you could never do anything cheap or common. And that is why I trust you in such a situation as this. If it still seems difficult, remember Albert's insult. I've been thinking about that. Good. That will give you the strength you need. Go, my dear. Remember, courage. Dr. Heller. I'm so glad to find you. I wanted to talk with you. I uh, wanted, um, you were planning to take the boys to the observatory tonight, Dr. Heller. Yes, Your Highness. Tonight, the summer constellations are particularly brilliant. Yes, of course, but, uh, Dr. Heller, I was going to ask you to give up your stars tonight. I wanted you to come to the ball we are giving for Prince Albert. Oh, I'm honored, Your Highness, particularly since the invitation comes from your own lips. And if the party seems stupid to you, will you come and dance with me? Dance with you, Princess? <laughs> yes, and uh, talk with me. Tell me about the star. Would you like that? Oh, Your Highness, you're promising me the most beautiful evening of my life. You will come then. Of course, and thank you, Princess. Thank you. Not at all. I shall look forward to it myself. You know, Your Highness, how happy you've made me tonight. You wouldn't rather be looking at your stars. If I could be looking at them with you, Your Highness. I'm sure you could tell me any number of interesting things about them. And finally, Your Royal Highness, as the only but proud Burgomaster of Rustenburg, Rustenburg... Rustenburg... Once the seat of the Holy Roman Empire, Rustenburg, whose sons have fought and died on the battlefields of two continents. Rustenburg... Rustenburg... I 
Fastenberg, whose proud history traces back to the mists of antiquity. Rustenburg, which defied Napoleon and all his legions. Rustenburg, Rustenburg, whose burgomaster now receives from us Albert Frederick Joseph Christian Sandoval, Duke of Herzegovina, Marquis of Terrain, heir apparent to the throne of Moravia, this decoration, the order of our royal house, second class with palms. Your Highness, such a great honor and so unexpected. I'm sure your highness would find the stars very fascinating. Dr. Haller, the number of your accomplishments continues to amaze me. You ride, you swim, you teach, you look at the stars, and now I see you dance. He dances very well, Albert. I'm sure of it. Well, I, I wonder... I beg your pardon, Dr. Haller. You were about to say... Her Highness has very graciously expressed the desire to go with me to the observatory and look at the stars. Oh, no, Dr. Heller. I don't think you understood. I only... Uh, but, Alexandra, I think that's a splendid idea. It's a beautiful summer night, the stars are out, and you have an astronomer to tell you how far apart they are. Yes. Your Highness. Yes. Beatrice. You're right. You don't need to say it. Alexandra's overdoing it. Just a little. A little? And do you realize that the next dance is the supper dance? And Alexandra must have it with Albert? We'll tell the orchestra to wait. That star up there. That very blue one. What is that? Dr. Heller, you were going to tell me about the stars. I meant to, Your Highness. But now I... I... What is the matter? A little while ago, you seemed so happy. Shall I tell you? I'm jealous. Jealous? Jealous of... Yes, Your Highness, yes. Oh, I didn't know. Dr. Heller, you've never spoken to me like this before. I've hardly ever spoken to you at all, Your Highness. But that doesn't mean there haven't been things I could have said to him. This is stranger than your stars. <laughs> You're in luck, Albert. Um, uh, Your Highness. What do you mean? Another man making love to her highness. That lets you out. That remark doesn't particularly amuse me, Lutzen. I'm not trying to amuse you. I'm congratulating you. Why have I never known this? Why? You would never have known it but for today, your highness. Today, for the first time, you suddenly began to look at me as if I were a man. But I said nothing. Well, oh, there was nothing in what you said. It was the way you said it. And now I can't speak to you as I used to, coldly and respectfully. Little princess. Why do you call me that? Because that's how I've always thought of you. And now at last I have the courage to speak to you from my heart. Tonight I must no, tell you please, that... Oh, but you this must is something I must no, tell you. There's something I must tell you first. Oh. I'm so ashamed. Oh, you mean that you... If there's anything you can say to make me happy, I... No, this won't make you happy. And if I tell you, promise never to speak of it again. I promise. I want you to respect me, always. My mother has only one ambition in her life. That is, to see me a queen. Prince Albert paid no attention to me. My mother thought his interest might be awakened. If there were another man... Have I hurt you so terribly? No. It was 
just a box on the ear. Do you despise me? I worship you, Princess. <laughs> and now I can worship you hopelessly again. May I escort you back to the ballroom? Please don't look so worried. I like the part you've given me. <laughs> what better way to serve a beautiful princess? With a knife in your heart and a smile on your lips. Please don't look so frightened. Let's act as though nothing had happened. And now I can talk to you about the stars. And I can explain some of the various constellations. And the constellation of the eagle, your highness. Now that is a group of stars that suggests an eagle in flight. And please go on. I was just telling your highness of an unusual event that takes place tonight. Really? Where? In the sky, your highness. Oh, I see. Only in the sky. Yes. Well, well, that, that's a very, very interesting. <laughs> yes, uh, that's a uh, very interesting. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, the professor's been telling us the most fascinating things about the stars. Really? <laughs> I don't wonder Alexandra found it difficult to leave the stars and come down to Earth with us again. <laughs> One of these days you'll find she's become an astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Albert, uh, uh, you don't want to miss this last dance with Alexandra. Indeed, I do not. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Heller, you look tired tonight. On the contrary, Your Highness. This is one of the happiest hours of my life. Uh, yet you seem nervous, while your face is flushed. That may be due to the unaccustomed surroundings, Your Highness. Dr. Haller, if you are tired, don't feel that you must remain for the supper. We will excuse you. If you would prefer to go to bed. Go to bed? What? I never felt more awake in my life. Alexandra, I'm trying to make love to you. I told you, Albert, you needn't be in your house. I know, but I want to. Perhaps you'd rather I wouldn't make love to you. Oh, no, it's very nice of you, Albert. you'd rather I told you about the stars. I'm sorry I can't. Where is he? I don't, don't know. Don't stand there doing nothing. Find him. Well, the supper. <laughs> yes, the supper.
angry with me because of what happened this morning? This morning? Oh, no. I've quite forgotten this morning. I haven't forgotten how charming you were, Alexandra. Oh, here you are. Were you afraid Alexandra had disappeared again? No, I have a just... Uh, I mean, I, I'm glad to find you together. <laughs> I'm afraid you take your duties as a hostess too seriously. I? <laughs> you seem so nervous. Nervous? I? Oh, I'm never nervous. No! Oh, Dr. Heller, not here. There's another place. Oh, this will do quite nicely. Thank you. Are we waiting for someone else? No, I think we are all here now. Perhaps we can begin with supper then. <laughs> and you can begin to be really clever. <laughs> are you going to do? Are you so afraid? Albert, I do hope you're going to like this consomme. The chef is so proud of it. It's perfect. Alexandra, is the professor telling you more about the stars? Uh, yes, Your Highness. You see, tonight is the first opportunity I've had to speak to Her Highness about them. And there's so much to tell. But, but Dr. Haller, this is no place... Now, that constellation we were looking at tonight, for instance, do you know, Your Highness, how many stars it contains? No less than 20,000. And of these 20,000, more than half are larger than our Earth. And the group of stars that I... I thought it'd be pleasant to have our coffee in here. <laughs> Just the family. <laughs> and so you see, Your Highness, our little planet is, after all, really quite unimportant. So there's more to it. You were so quiet when I met you this morning, Dr. Haller. How do you account for your eloquence at the supper table? Why, perhaps I've been inspired by Her Highness. I thought I told you to keep him away. He wouldn't even listen to me. I drink to the very beautiful daughter of the house. My boy, don't you know one shouldn't gulp down brandy like that? <coughs> I... No, Father, I didn't know. To tell you the truth, that's the first glass of brandy I've ever taken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come now, not really. <laughs> yes, Your Highness, but tonight anything might happen. Alexandra! Didn't I say one shouldn't gulp down brandy like that? You never drink brandy. But tonight, anything might happen. Oh, I know why she did it. To make the professor feel less embarrassed. It was quite unnecessary. I don't wonder Alexandra likes you. Those are very pretty speeches you make about the stars. They were not intended to be pretty speeches, Your Highness. There was a moral behind what you said? Yes. You see, astronomy teaches us that men, just as the tiniest stars, are all worlds in themselves. All of them? All of them, Your Highness. Of course, one in your exalted position would hardly understand that. You've never been taught that these worlds, whether they're stars or human beings, are worlds one may not destroy. <laughs> Dr. Haller, no one wants to destroy any of your worlds. Women sometimes do it with a smile. Your Highness is looking at me very intently. I like what you say. And Your Highness is looking at me very unhappily. Perhaps you do not like what I say. I'm not quite used to hearing you talk like this. <laughs> Worlds one may not destroy. It all sounds very uh, romantic, but as you say, these are things I can't understand. 
Yes, Your Highness. This is something you know nothing about. Splendid. All my life I've been waiting to hear someone address me in this tone. Let me tell you, you've pleased me. And your manners. Charming. I haven't the slightest interest in pleasing you. And certainly no one can accuse you of not being frank. Oh, but... Oh, my... My head! Aunt Beatrice! Oh, Mother! Oh, Mother, what is it? Tell them to stop the music and close off this hole from the guests. Aunt Beatrice, let me take you to your room. Oh, Albert, please forgive me. Of course, my dear. But why has the music stopped? I thought you... Do you want all the guests hurrying in here to see what has happened? I... Oh... Yes, let's have the music. The more, the merrier. Oh, Albert. And you really think I shouldn't go to Mother? My dear, I know these sudden attacks of your mother's. She's been having them for 30 years. When they come on her sitting down, she stands up. And when they come on her standing up, she sits down. Uh -huh. Dear Benedict, I'm so glad you're here. Well, my son, have you had enough madness for one night? I couldn't stand it any longer, Father. Do you think I could let him go on ridiculing me, insulting me, and saying nothing? Are you angry at me, too? Why, no, of course then not, but he... Then don't shout at me. Oh, forgive me, Father, I'm sorry. my ears when I was naughty, but when he said that, I could see the little village where he was born, and his mother, who loved him so very much, even when she boxed his ears. Now, Benedict, what do you think of that? I think your mother should have boxed your ears. <laughs> oh, you dear gracious princess, I have forgiven you for everything. A nice mess your mother's let me in for. And now I've got to be severe with you. What you have done is really quite... Quite... How do you expect me to be severe with you? When you look at me so lovingly? Dear Benedict, you look at me so lovingly. How can I ever scold you? You two brave children, and in such a plight, and so happy, happier than you'll ever be again. For the daylight is almost here, the daylight that must separate you. What can I do with you? But drink to 
your help. Benedict, Beatrice wants to see you. Well, at least it'll make me feel better telling Beatrice what I think of her. No. No, you wait here. Come, Simple Rosa. I'm sorry, Beatrice. I don't even know your first name. What is it? Nicholas. How old are you? Twenty-seven. Where were you born? In one of the provinces on the frontier. Which one? Princess, at last we're alone and you question me like a census taker. Oh, I don't know how to begin. I want to know about you. All there is to know and all at once. And in the morning? Let the morning take care of itself. The moments are precious now. In the morning they'll sweep me out of here like so much dirt. Highness. Yes, what is it? Her Highness, your mother, commanded the music should continue until she directed otherwise. Then why have you come here? The guests have all gone, your Highness. But the party has not ended. We still want music. And let it be very gay music. Your Highness, this is the last hour, the last moment, perhaps, that I can be with you, and I... Do you love me, little princess? Oh, Dr. Heller. Why, are you so afraid of me? This is the first time I've ever seen a man in love. And he happens to be in love with me. How cold your hand is. And your hand is so warm. Why, why are you trembling so? I feel I want to do something I shouldn't. Something wicked. But must you look at me like that? I only want to be kind to you. I want to do something to make you happy. Would you, um, like something to eat? No. Some wine, perhaps? Oh, no. Would you like to call me Alexandra? Alexandra? Nicholas. Oh. Before I was afraid. But now I know that I can be the rival to a king. You show me that. And now? And now for the morning. Now we shall see who is king. He or I. Oh, Nicholas. Oh, princess, princess, I'm in love. And this is my one hour of life. What do you want? I want you. Oh, I want to take you away from this castle, away from these people where you and Nicholas. I... Nicholas! I beg your pardon. I came to tell you her mother has gone to bed. It has been a bit strenuous for her. I'm afraid it's partly on my account. Oh, no. Well, I'm quite sure Aunt Beatrice will feel better in the morning. Good night, Alexandra. Oh, the professor. Good night, Dr. Haller. I liked what you said and the way you said it. A little defiant, but quite original. Oh, you are mistaken, Albert. No, I think not. <laughs> There was inspiration in his words. It was very pretty, upwards, ever upwards. Your ridicule is unjust, Albert. You have all my sympathy, Alexandra. It's been a very trying experience for you. Your mother has just explained to me how Dr. Heller has had the impertinence to force his unwelcome attention to her. That's not true. Mother has no right to say that. Your Highness. And I say now that he is an ill-bred little stargazer. You go too far, Albert. Why? You're a presumptuous intruder. Don't you know? him. But I... I forbid you. That's quite another matter. I most humbly apologize to you, Dr. Heller.
see, the daylight that we've been talking about is already here. Where have you been? Oh, wait till you hear. Come on, surprise party. Party? Your party. They haven't stopped since you left. Only they've moved here. They're waiting for you at the hotel in the village. Come on. Was this your idea, Lutzen? <laughs> yes. Then go back to your drunken friends. My friends? <laughs> she came to see you. Oh, leave me alone. But Albert, Mitzi's waiting. Mitzi? Don't you remember Mitzi? Oh, I'm not interested. Well, but uh, what, uh, what shall I tell Mitzi? What you told her in the first place. She's not my type. Here. I'm leaving at once and I had to see you again. Why? To find out if you're really in love with Dr. Haller. Didn't I show you that I was? That seemed to be your intention. Does Dr. Haller love you? What right have you to question me? Yes, he does. Then where is he now? If he's, uh, he... He's out walking in the park looking at the stars, or what's left of them. Albert, I will not allow you to ridicule him. I'm not ridiculing him. I'm only saying that he's not in love with you. If he were, he'd be with you now. He's not like you. No, he's not like me, because I am in love with you. And when I'm in love, I don't go for walks in the park. Did he... did he kiss you like that? You forget yourself. You made me forget that this morning. That's why I'm in love with you now. You behave more like a child. I like to see you angry. It makes you more beautiful than ever. Spoiled child, that's what you are, spoiled and conceited. You think you have just to kiss me once, and then I shall be in love with you like all those other girls. You are jealous of them. Do you insist upon being stupid? Do you insist upon pretending? I'm not pretending. Then you're really in love with Dr. Haller. Yes, and I shall never forgive you for ridiculing the most beautiful the most glorious thing that ever happened to me. But of course, you couldn't understand such a thing. Oh, yes, I can. Are you ready to give up everything for him? Of course. Then perhaps I can make it easier for both of you. I don't know how, but I'll try. Alexandra, I am the one that's being jealous for the first time in my life. That's why I've acted so badly. Can you understand? Yes, Albert. And if you ever think of me, remember the time when you were a little girl and I used to come to visit you. You said you liked me then. If I hadn't sent for you, you would have gone without coming to say goodbye? Yes, Your Highness. You have forgotten what happened last night. I have forgotten. Even when I... Even, even that. Why must you speak so coldly now? It's the morning, Your Highness. The sun is shining. 
not the stars. Then all that you said last night, you didn't mean any of it? Last night I meant it. Until you kissed me. What do you mean? That kiss showed me that you did not love me. That you were only sorry for me. I don't want your pity. Are you trying to tell me that what I did was very stupid? It was a little too much, Your Highness. You discovered all this by walking alone in the park. Yes, you see the morning breezes I'm were... glad you see things so clearly now. Your Highness, Alexandra, last night for a little while we found happiness together. Can't we remember that and forget the rest? Ah, here you are. I was afraid you'd go without my having a chance to say goodbye to you. You are lucky, Benedict, to find him. He would have gone without saying goodbye. Even to me. Yes, I expected that. He's been very cruel to me, Benedict. Cold and bitter. What could you expect after that kiss? Of course, my dear. When a man is ready to risk everything to defend his honor and his pride, well, he doesn't want to be saved by a woman's kiss. That's about it, isn't it, my son? Yes, father. Your Highness. Goodbye, little princess. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. For me? For you, Dr. Howler. I... Goodbye, boys. I was ready to give up everything for him. He didn't want that. What did he want then? To worship you, but from a great distance, like, like his star. And now? He still has them. Only now they will shine more brightly for him. Then I wasn't a heroine after all. No. What was I then? Oh, don't ask me that. Benedict! Benedict, well, at least I know the worst. Oh, worse? Perhaps it's only a coincidence, these political crises. What does it matter? The point is that Albert has told them what has happened. This is merely an answer to the insult he received last night. Well, Beatrice, I could have told you in the first place that a tutor near a princess is about as safe as a match near a barrel of gunpowder. Ruined I may be, Benedict, but I don't have to listen to you saying I told you so. <laughs> well, my dear. What do you think of that? I wasn't thinking of it at all. What were you thinking of? I was thinking of love. Still? Mm. That's bad. It seems that everything I ever thought of it was wrong. My dear. You're not the first to find that out. But I do understand now about kisses. Kisses? 
I never knew until last night there could be more than one kind. Alexandra, for the first time, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, never mind. It doesn't matter now. Alexandra. Who's there? Shh. Albert. You. I had to see you again. Tomorrow I go to Hohenberg. You know about that. Yes. I was so stupid last night. I didn't realize how brave you were. Brave? You were ready to give up everything for love and I laughed at you. Will you ever forgive me? Yes, Albert. Then I can go. Albert, is it really so important that you marry her? Oh, the Emperor would take away my throne if I refused. Well, couldn't you just give up your throne and go to uh, South America or someplace? Oh, they say Princess Marie has a very nice disposition. But would you care about losing your throne if it meant you could be with someone you love? There's only one person I love. I've always wanted to go to South America. Alexandra, do you love me? Well, I don't want you to marry that dreadful princess. Do you love me? I think so. <laughs> Alexandra, can you get some things together now? No. Hurry. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, what's Hurry up. Alexandra, 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 where are you? The watchman saw someone climbing up in heaven's name. Albert. Never mind her, Albert. No matter what she says, take that bag. But I'm not afraid. Alexandra. No, Mother. You're not going to stop us. Then I'm going with Albert now, this dinner. But I... Uh, I know he's going to lose his throne, but I don't care. We love each other, and you're not going to stop us. Benedict. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> the the <Barone> the Mother. <laughs> Albert. No, goodbye. Where are you going? South America. Somewhere. I don't know. Goodbye, Benedict. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. All I want to know is, why couldn't they use the stairs? And Princess Marie of Hohenberg. What about her? You shouldn't have to ask that, Beatrice. If you could invent a love affair between Alexandra and the tutor, surely Albert could invent a princess. Invent her? Oh, I'm surprised at you, Beatrice. A woman of your political knowledge? And it never occurred to you to look in this book? Hmm? Uh, you know it well. The Almanac de Gotha, where you will find the history of every noble family in Europe. And where you will find in particular that there's not been a Princess Marie in the Hohenberg family since the 17th century. Uh, oh, I know that. Oh, well, Albert was bright enough to know that there's only one thing more romantic than a tutor, and that is a prince who is about to lose his throne. Oh. Uh, and I hate to admit it, but it really seems that your little drama is about to have a most undeserved happy ending. 